everyone. Uh, I'm the principal product manager in Microsoft working in Azure Data. And our team is really focused on onboarding and enabling strategic ISVs, uh, Teradata being one of them that we work with to bring them onto Fabric. So while we'll spend most of our time uh, listening to what uh, AI Unlimited workload has to offer, we thought that we'd also take some time to talk about you know, why Fabric and you know, what's the you know, magic uh, bullet here of onboarding and integrating on Fabric. So with that, I'll start with an overview of Fabric and then you know, what are we doing with our strategic ISVs and then I'm going to pass the baton over to Rob and then you know, he will deep dive into AI Unlimited. So uh, sounds like a plan? Awesome. So why Fabric, right? And uh, those of you have heard uh, you know, Steve today morning in his keynote, we've been hearing this all along that you know, chief data officers or chief information officers really want to spend bulk of their time giving the, getting the value of data out to their customers and to their you know, business users versus spending most of the time in integrating and you know, bringing data together, data being in different silos, they're on-prem, they're on the cloud, they're hybrid. So they spend most of their time in trying to bring all of this data together and less time in you know, actually gathering insights and pulling insights to drive business value. So really that's sort of the premise of why Fabric is existing and you know, what's the kind of the North Star goal with Microsoft Fabric. And Fabric is not a, you know, it's not a single data product, but it's a data platform. So, you know, you learn and see how, like, you know, this enables solving this problem of, you know, one copy of data that we have. So, in a nutshell, what is uh, Microsoft Fabric? You see that, you know, it's a data platform. It's basically one lake is something that you'll hear a lot. So one lake is basically a logical copy, a logical construct, I would say, of the data that really sits on in the underlying storage. And then on top of it, we layer on Purview, which is our governance solution. Then we have, you know, all of our security. It's our one security that's layered on top of the platform. And all of these individual workloads, we call them workloads that you see like the data factory, the data engineering, all of these are different workloads that basically run on this one copy of data. So think of the power that we have here is each of these capabilities are a set of tools and uh, op features, artifacts as we call them, that we have that allow you to unify the data, in many cases not even needing to copy data. And this is what's going to power what we want to do with our next generation of AI. So you'll hear this theme repeatedly, not just today, that you know, we say we call it the OneDrive for data. Now, why do we call it the OneDrive for data? So you know, you're probably everybody using Microsoft Office. If you put it in the construct of OneDrive, you know, your Word, Excel, PowerPoint, you know, SharePoint, everything runs on top of the data that's in some way connected to your OneDrive, right? So that's, the, that's kind of the analogy that we have with one lake where all of our workloads basically run on that one copy of data. So just a little more, you know, uh, one more click down into, you know, what does that one copy of data mean, right? Like, so, you know, our investments are all about, you know, open. So we are looking at Delta Parquet. That's like, you know, our support for open data format. Soon to come will be our support for Iceberg. So we'll also have Xtable support, but today, all of our engines that you see here, you know, starting from Data Factory on the left to Data Activator, each is optimized to run on top of Delta Parquet. So it's not like in one engine you're going to get more processing power and one less. It's optimized so that it can run and perform and scale for all of these workloads that run on top of the one, uh, one copy of the data that you have. Right? We also have the concept of workspaces and universal compute. I'm not going to dive into it, but I can definitely take you know, questions on these areas outside because I do want to leave time for Rob to really talk about AI Unlimited and we can address these questions in the context of how does AI Unlimited work. 
We also, a lot of times questions come around like CI, CD, so we have full Git integration, so you have continuous integration and continuous delivery that's incorporated into you know, this data that you're looking at. And most importantly, as we you know, dive into the world and era of AI, being able to do, like having compliance on what data you're using, is the data anonymized? Do I have good lineage and tracking? All of that is governed through your purview that comes right out of the box, which is available to you on Microsoft Fabric. The other important thing that I wanted to just uh, stress on as like you know, the key value prop is the separation of storage and compute. And you will see some of that in action when you know, we see the demo that Rob's going to share. Uh, here we have storage and compute separated, so it's completely serverless, and let's see what that means. So here is an example of, we're using our combination of data factory, and data factory is really if you want to build you know, integration pipelines, right? Like if you want to basically bring in data from an external source into one, like you've got the entire gallery of our connectors that you can use to build, uh, you know, to build the integration and to bring the data in. Actually, most recently, I have to mention this, we just announced at Fabcon in Europe that we're act we've actually embedded you know, AI capabilities into our data factory components so that it's much more easily usable for you know, users who are not necessarily needing to write full code. So here we have an example of a customer database. And the concept of lake houses is you know, what is the physical storage that you build on top of one lake. So a Spark engine is running basically to you know, connect to your customer 360 database. This is one example. You're probably using a Python notebook to execute your code or to generate certain analytics. Next, you see we have a SQL endpoint. Now, when you're actually connecting to the warehouse workload, in the warehouse in the traditional EDW, you're actually connecting to a T-SQL endpoint, and then you are using the same experience, same interface, on, in your workspace, now you have from your switching gears, maybe from a data engineer to more of a data analyst who now wants to write SQL to be able to connect to the finance DB and potentially a business analyst. All of this serverless, right? Then your third scenario, KQL, is what is our Custo query language. So it's basically a real-time analytic system that we have available. And that's something that you connect to gather service telemetry, or in many, many scenarios, we work with our industrial partners who want to bring in data, for example, from remote devices, from IoT devices, from electrical grids and transformers that you know, bring in data. And that's where you use KQL, which is just another engine. Just note that all of it runs on top of uh, one lake. And then finally, we have analysis services, which you know, many, many of you use today with Power BI. So you're, you know, that's another service. So note that all of these services individually are running on top of data that has been abstracted to individual lake houses that you have separated for storing specific you know, organizational data, business data, telemetry data, and even analytical data that's consumed by your end users. So while this was a very high-level overview of Fabric, what are strategic ISV partnerships? And this is really the crux of what we want to cover today. So in Fabric, through our extensibility framework, we're also opening the gates for our partners because we believe that you know, there is a great better together story here. And so you will see this shortly with what Rob's going to present is there is a workload that Teradata has built that will seamlessly be part of all of our 1P workloads. And from a customer's perspective, it's just another workload that will run on top of the one leg data that they have in their own tenant. And Fabric is SaaS, so I should have mentioned that in the beginning. So it's a SaaS service that you know, customers are going to use. So you don't have to invest in building infrastructure, no nuts and bolts, you consume the services. So this is an example and an analogy that we have. So think of it as you know, the operating system where you have the Windows Store, and each of the workloads can be likened to different apps that are running within the operating system. And we have introduced another app that allows a partner to bring their capability and kind of publish their workload alongside all of our 1P workloads. And 
what that will look like is going to be something like this. So when we say your workload, it really is representative of any third party or partner organization that would want to build their workload and expose their capabilities that they want to complement with what we offer in Fabric to you know, bring to the customers. And then this is actually going to be in public preview. And you know, I'm not going to say anymore. There are many partners who are you know, coming uh, on board. And you know, public preview is going to happen not too far away in the future. Finally, monetization. Monetization is a process that is going to be completely controlled by the partner, in this case, Teradata. So while you get the licenses to use Fabric, as a, and you become a Fabric tenant, a partner, in this case, Teradata, will actually have control who they want to license to, what are the different licensing models they will want to you know, enable for their partners, and all of it is going to be available to a customer through uh, Azure Marketplace, just like we have our other uh, you know, existing past solutions that we have published in Marketplace. Uh, there is a little discovery process that I will leave for Rob to cover, but just know that Again, we don't want to get into a lot of the architectural components, but know that there is a full extensibility framework that we offer our partners that they take to use, develop the front end and the back end of their application, which they completely control, you know, AKA workload. And when it's actually published on Fabric, the experience looks identical to as if you are using a Fabric, another Fabric native workload. And so it's tight integration and better ROI from a partner perspective as well as from a customer's perspective. So with that, I'm just going to hand it over to Rob to take it away and see how in this story, AI Unlimited fits in. Over to you, Rob. Okay, thanks. All right, thank you, Madhu. Uh, and just, I guess before I get started, if we could get a raise of hands, has anybody here not seen a demo of AI Unlimited and doesn't know anything about it? Okay, so just, all right, so, so a few people. All right, so a lot of you guys have, have seen something. All right, that's, that's refreshing. So uh, I'll start with, an, oh, so what is AI Unlimited? Uh, there, there have been themes at this conference about reducing friction and meeting the customer where they are. Those, are. those are at the heart of what we're doing with AI Unlimited. So with this product, we're taking the engine out of the warehouse and making it accessible to those data builders within your organization. So it's the data engineers and the data scientists. Uh, we want it to be accessible to them. We want them to be able to pay for it themselves. We want them to be able to consume compute without having any impact on your production systems. And we want it to work on open table format uh, object store. So really flexible and easy to use. Uh, we, it comes in two flavors now. The first flavor, which I'll just, I'll just touch on quickly, is what we have dubbed the marketplace version. This is, this is out now. You deploy this on your, in your own infrastructure. So you would, you would deploy this in Azure. You'd be paying for the compute. You'd manage uh, users and projects through GitHub. But it is, uh, it's completely scaled down to zero, no commitment. So you can set it up. Your data scientist can run an hour's worth of queries, spend about $5 on Teradata, and never use it again. So we're scaling down that low. So with this version, we got the engine out of the warehouse. So why, why Fabric? Uh, I think Fabric is that next mile where we've taken out of the warehouse, now we're putting it into a really powerful environment for, for these end users. Uh, and it's the, what, what Microsoft is putting together with Fabric. Uh, and so we're bringing all the power of the Teradata engine, all those in database analytics. And by being in Fabric, we have all the strengths of, of OneLake, where you can uh, centrally manage data across, across different clouds from within OneLake. Uh, you're, you're taking data out of the warehouse. You're making it accessible to uh, your analysts to get insights from. Like what, what better place than Fabric for security and flexibility right underneath Power BI? Uh, and then another point is this, what they're building is this unified platform for data scientists, analysts, 
all these different personas on the end who on that side of the house can have their own friction if they're losing track of what they're doing, if the BI team is going out and making promises to the business that are essentially checks that the data engineering team has to catch. If they're, if they're not talking to each other, they, they typically have problems. So getting into this environment is very valuable to us. Uh, and to do that, we have at the top, this is something that uh, Madhu was mentioning earlier, it's a serverless experience. So what that means is from the point of view of a data scientist, they wanna go and write a query, they don't have to worry about provisioning compute, and they don't have to tap IT on the shoulder and get something set up for them. They could just go in and, and create it. And this is all part of the workload hub, uh, the, the workload hub launch, so I guess I, I won't say any more about the date, I might, do I have it? Uh, I got something up there about it. But um, so this was, uh, the, the, the framework was announced in a private preview, public preview at, at Build. We were there, we've been working very closely with Microsoft. Uh, we've done uh, some focus testing with them and we're, we're ready to, to present, ready, ready to be there when the workload hub itself goes public preview. And so now I'm gonna go deep on the architecture. So you can see what the team is building. Everybody's really excited about it. Uh, you're probably wondering what's under the hood. So this is a high view of, of our implementation for Fabric. So unlike the, ver the other version that I meant previously, this is a SaaS version. We are hosting compute. All the compute is in our tenant. Um, we are reading and writing to OneLake and we are presenting our UI through an iframe uh, right, in, right into Fabric itself, and this is all part of the, uh, the ISV extensibility uh, framework that Madhu had mentioned. And now going even deeper. So this is, this is what's actually running. So making all this work within, uh, within, within AI Unlimited, there, there's, there are several key services. We have the, uh, the session manager, this is what, uh, and I'll go into detail in the flows, but this is what checks out compute. It sets up ingress for the user to, to talk to, in, to speak to Jupyter, to speak to the notebook client, and it lets the notebook client know that there's a new connection coming in. The pool manager is what keeps track of a warm pool of compute. This is how we uh, assign compute quickly and create a very smooth experience for the end user. We have uh, engines on hot standby. Uh, we have the user service, uh, and then a number of other services. I'll, I'll cover them as we go through the flow. And so when a, a session starts, here I'm focusing on the, all the back-end services. I'll also add that caveat. Uh, a, so a session starts in the workspace. Um, the, our session manager reaches out to the authentication service, is what checks and makes sure that the user is a valid Fabric user, and then it goes to our user service, this is what checks to make sure that they're a valid AI Unlimited user. We check to see if, there's, uh, if they have a free trial, if there's still uh, room in their free trial, or uh, if they've upgraded to a paid subscription. Once we've passed that, the session manager now checks compute out of the warm pool. Uh, it lets the notebook client to know that it needs to get ready, that it's gonna have a connection incoming. The notebook client now has an idea of what notebook it's supposed to be, and so if it's supposed to have tables or built-ins, it'll reach out to its storage to add that and load that into the notebook itself. And then ingress is created uh, so, so that the user can connect into the notebook via a WebSocket and the session manager reaches out to the workspace to let it know uh, where it needs to talk. And now, oh, and now we have an active session. Um, and so when the user is connecting to and, and working in the notebook, the, note, the engine itself is reading and writing to OneLake. Uh, and so what this means is if you're doing, if you're doing work in, well, it's reading and writing to OneLake, um, what, this is all ephemeral compute. So as soon as you cancel a session and you leave, the compute is destroyed and the ingress is destroyed. So what that means is if you're any work that's done, any data that's created during the session, you need to write it to one lake or it will be destroyed along with the engine. So we're not saving any of your data and none of your data is going back to AI Unlimited. 
Uh, we also see there's another flow on the bottom, and we'll see that during the demo. This is connecting to the OneLake service, which is reading data directly from OneLake. So at, at all times, this is a feature of Fabric. At all times, you're going to have a uh, lake house. I got a lake house explorer on the left-hand side. Uh, and this is a direct pass through into the lake, so you could always see, see the data that you have accessible to work with. All right. And so this is, now we're zooming back out to the higher view. Uh, we get asked, I get asked a lot about what our integration is with Vantage Cloud Lake and Vantage Cloud Enterprise. And the simple answer is uh, today it is, AI Unlimited is a standalone product. Um, so the point of integration is actually object store. Um, there's also consistency between the engines. So this is, um, there, so, that, so UDF support is even across the two. Uh, the, your, if your team is using those in-database functions, which we certainly hope they are, uh, that will be consistent across the two, but they are two separate products today. AI Unlimited does add some capabilities that are not present in Lake and Enterprise. Uh, Enterprise does not have OTF. Uh, Lake does have OTF, but it has not yet integrated with uh, OneLake. So if you're looking to use the Teradata engine in Fabric or on one lake, then AI Unlimited will, will do that for you. Um, yeah. And so, just the benefits, we talked a lot about the architecture, I just wanna bring it back to the benefits. Uh, the benefits are the, the consistency between what you're doing in the warehouse and what your data builders can do on the edge in Fabric. Um, so, your, your data engineers uh, that are the prepping data for all the work that's gonna happen within Power BI, uh, they're gonna have a consistent set of tools to what's coming out of the warehouse. Your data scientists, if they're doing discovery, they're creating workloads that they want to go into production someday on the warehouse, all those, those functions that they'll be working with are gonna be functions that you already have access to in, in your EDW. And so now we will, uh, We'll go into the demo. And so a quick overview of the demo, uh, we're gonna go over uh, discovering workloads. We're gonna load data into Fabric, so you wanna know how you can actually access data. We're gonna take a, a quick look at that. Um, then we're gonna go through the, uh, through the, we're gonna go very quickly through a notebook demo. Um, and I'll double click here because we touch on it fairly quickly in the demo itself. But uh, discovering a workload is gonna happen in the workload hub. And so if a workload in this context is an app, the workload hub is like an app store. And so that's where your users are going to be able to discover AI Unlimited. And so I think the, one of the key takeaways of the message here is that once this is in public preview, users at your company are going to, any, if, if you're using Fabric today, or if your team is using a Power BI and they have Fabric underneath, there's a good chance that your users can stumble upon AI Unlimited right there in their, uh, in their workload hub. Uh, every, we will, as, as every workload in the workload hub, will have a free trial, so they'll be, able to, uh, they'll be able to load it up, assign it to a capacity, and play with it for a couple weeks. And with that, I'm gonna get to the demo. And so we're here in the data science view, uh, but we wanna see if there are some other tools, applications that can help us. So we go into the workloads tab, and then here we can see the native workloads that are part of Fabric. We can see what's already been added to our organization. It so happens we've already been added. Uh, but this is the workload hub, and this is where you can go to any of the applications, click in and see a description, see what kind of items are included. You can also assign it to capacities. This is a pretty critical part of making sure that users have access to the workload, is assigning it to a fabric capacity. So we've done that. We've, we have it. We're now going to go out into one of the shared workspaces that we're working in with other people. And we can see different items in the workspace. This includes AI Unlimited notebooks, uh, Spark notebook, warehouses, lake houses. I want to add data, so I'm going to go ahead and create a lake house. Um, and so I'm, I'm just a data scientist here at the company now, and this is, this is how I do it. Uh, 
And as you can see, I'm, I'm prompted right away with different ways to start adding data into this, this construct. Uh, what I'm gonna do is create a shortcut to an ADLS Gen 2 bucket that has the data in it that I want. Uh, so I, I add in the address to the endpoint. Uh, I've, I've used this before, so it already actually knows what my account key is. And I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna select the files that I want to load as a table. Um, and the, this is all data that's related to one of the samples that you could see on the show floor. And so what we're looking at here is this is actually a, a shortcut to data. And I'm gonna select the UK retail because this is what we're gonna be doing segmentation on. And I'm going to load this table. And it just takes a minute. And as I was saying, that we're gonna be taking a look at the data prep demo today. Uh, here, but if you go out to the show floor, we have a data prep demo, and we also have a segmentation demo that shows how you can uh, use open source LLMs to do vector embeddings and, and bring that in for experimentation with AI Unlimited as well. Um, but our table is loaded. I checked the columns, it looks right. And now we're going back, now we're, we're finally, we're actually going into AI Unlimited this time and we're going to create uh, an, an AI unlimited notebook, uh, and this is gonna be based on the data prep sample. And I'm typing it in. Uh, all right. And so now I'm gonna get my notebook. Um, and I'll note here that the team is working on making sure that the notebook is a very similar experience to the native notebook in, in Fabric, so anybody who's used to one should know the other. Uh, and here we found the lake house that we had just created. Yep, and so here it is. I'll just take a look at it check the columns, everything looks good. Um, we also, uh, and so we have a little quality of life feature that we show off here where we could just grab a table and we could drag it into a cell and that automatically adds the expression, uh, you know, grab top 100 from that table. So you can imagine if we had a, a lot, many more tables over there on the left, that this is a quick way to sort of sift through those, check the columns, uh, and then dragging them into a cell is just a shortcut to get, to get access to that table and then turn it into uh, whatever it is that you want. Um, but it's, it's that easy to get, get access to data from Fabric just via shortcut and then start working with it in, in our notebook or, or really any workload. Uh, and now, now we're going through the uh, demo and we're gonna go through pretty quickly. Uh, so here we're basically, we're running expression to take a look at the, the data that we got from ETL, make sure it's kind of what we expect. Uh, and then we're gonna start doing things to, uh, cl to clean this data. So we're going to uh, remove outliers. We're gonna get rid of, uh, we, we have missing values. We wanna fill those in by imputing them and we're gonna do segmentation based on buying behavior, so we're gonna start creating some features. So sales per item, and then I think uh, total sales is another one. Uh, and then we're going to, we normalize all this data. And then we put it into k-means. So if you go, if you take a look at our, our demos, we like k-means a lot. Um, I think it's somewhat visual without being uh, too flashy. Uh, so we come back to that a couple times. But here we use k-means to do, actually do the segmentation we like what came out of that, so we take all those steps that we did before, we put those into a simple, a very simple short query, it's simple and short because it's using those in database functions, and we can now put that into production, and then we have, a, we have another uh, function, the silhouette function, to check what's coming out of this to make sure uh, we're, we're getting what we expect from, uh, from the query. And so that, that's a look at it today. I mean, that, that's actually a look at it as of a couple weeks ago. 
Uh, we're, we're working towards public preview in November. There's a number of other features that we're looking to have. Uh, so one is monitoring hub, which is an, another part of Fabric. Integrating with that, we think we'll add, uh, you'll be able to schedule jobs. We're looking at self-serve pricing. We're, we're, we're gonna have a pricing model. Again, we want the people in the business to be able to easily, easily try this and use it and know that they want it before they come asking to you for a, a bigger uh, commitment. Uh, we're working on a free trial. Again, this is, this is something that's part of the Fabric Workload Hub experience. Um, and then, of course, listing it in Azure Marketplace. Uh, and then after the launch, so anybody who comes in and does a private preview today, it's, it's, it's a serverless experience. Uh, we're gonna add more multi-node clusters, t-shirt sizes, have a lot more options for the, the type of compute that users can use. Uh, and then looking forward to the future, we will be looking at uh, expanded presence in the workload uh, to include an actual uh, data warehouse item. Uh, and so if you are interested in private preview, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, this, is, this is also, you can scan this code. You can fill out a form online. The, it's not too late to be part of private preview. You'll have a two-week free trial. And, uh, and again, all, none of your data goes to us. It'll all be, uh, it will all be, if it's just with us, if you don't save it to your one link, it will be destroyed. So, and I think that's it. All right. All right, thank you uh, Madhu and Rob. And now we've got uh, a little bit of time for Q&A. So we've got a couple mics that we can run around the room. Just raise your hand if you have a question for either Madhu or Rob. Just a quick one, could you put the code back up there? <laughs> the, the code back? Yeah, for sure, yes. There we go. Um, so we're familiar with the uh, ClearScape uh, scripts. Do those port to this platform, or can you the, give us some guidance on that? The ClearScape, the ClearScape scripts. Yeah, the the example scripts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I do think they would. I'd like to get a final answer to you on that, but we do have. We're using all the functions. I'd have to I'd have to understand a little bit more about the specific scripts and see what's in there, but. Say we should. Hi. Uh, so my questions, uh, like I have two questions. The first question is: Is it a stateless uh, implementation of on a case only, or uh, is is it a stateless implementation on uh, Kubernetes? On Kubernetes. Oh. Uh, like what is the behind the screen? Uh, uh, it it is so it is all it is all Kubernetes. Those are all Kubernetes services that that I was showing off. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's using Azure Service Operator to execute, uh, and it's using, oh man, I'd, I'd have to go, I, here, let me go back. And then it's using, uh, one of the other services, well, one of the other services acts as a ledger, and then our services are actually making the decisions about uh, assigning compute, refilling the pool, uh, but it's all, it's a K8 Backplane, yeah. yeah, it's a SaaS solution, so we don't have to worry about all those things. It just, That's right. Okay. Uh, so another question I have is, uh, what are the different ways that we can connect to this uh, serverless application? Is the, there is only a notebook way, or we'll get any endpoint which we can use on our local machines to connect to the serverless? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so right now, we, have, we haven't tested any of that on a laptop, but that, that is, uh, if you're interested in working on a local machine, we'd love to talk to you, uh, for sure. But that, that's not something we're working on right now. Right now, it's all, it's, it's uh, through Fabric. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're not exposing, yeah, just if I can add. Yes, yeah. please. Oh, yeah, that's okay, yeah. I, there, we're not exposing any APIs at this point that you can actually connect, so that's available on the native workloads, but for the AI Unlimited, it mm. is, through the you know notebook, so there are no APIs at this point that are exposed. Anything else? All right. All right. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Before you go, make sure you go into the possible app, pull up the session, scroll to the bottom, and there will be a link to a survey. We'd love to get your feedback. 
But let's give uh, one more big round of applause to Madhu and Rob. Thank you guys. Thank you.